Federal politicians as well as many members of Canada's legal community are hotly debating a bill which would make it mandatory for all future Supreme Court justices to be fully bilingual. The legislation is now being studied by the Senate. The bill was proposed by the NDP and was passed by the House of Commons with the support of the Liberals and the Bloc Québécois. Conservative MPs voted against the bill, but not enough MPs were in the House at the time of the vote to block its passage. So now, its fate will be decided in the Conservative-dominated Senate. CPAC's Martin Stringer uh, speaks with the sponsor of the bill, New Brunswick NDP MP Yvonne Godet, and the Parliamentary Secretary for Official Languages, uh, Tory MP Shelley Glover. Yvon Godin, Shelley Glover, let's start with uh, your bill, Mr. Godin. Uh, once again, just it's before the Senate, but just give us the why of re requiring Supreme Court justices to be bilingual. Well, why? Well, first of all, we have a parliament that made law, and our law is made in English and in French, not translated. We have the federal court of our country that is both language. If a citizen go to court, he could ask for a judge of, that, that understand the language that he's talking to and the law that has been writing into. Uh, if you go to the appeal court of the federal court, if you go to the appeal court, it's the same and is in the law. When you come to the uh, Supreme Court of Canada, well, that's not there anymore. I saw cases where uh, uh, we look at the lawyer from uh, Moncton uh, at the University, Professor of the University of Moncton, Michel said, that went to the Supreme Court and he said two days after I listened to the CPAC because they, they transmitted back uh, to the public and he said I couldn't even understand my uh, my play de voyeur, what I has presented to it was not like mine. I didn't see myself into it. Then, when we look at the uh, last appointment that we have uh, we, after Bastarash, there was question, will they replace him with a person that is a bilingual, yes or no? Now I say, why should we do that all the time? Then why not our country don't establish that the judge will be appointed as a person that understands the two languages? Ms. Glover, the Conservative uh, caucus in the House of Commons voted against this, uh, but it, you, didn't oppose, you didn't block it because you didn't have enough people in the House. What's your opposition to it? Well, first and foremost, uh, we uh, agree that in principle, this would be wonderful if it was possible. But timing is everything, and unfortunately, Canada is not at the point where we have a pool that is large enough to be able to choose from of people who have both the merit and judicial excellence that is required in selecting uh, Supreme Court judges and the excellence in li the linguistic category. I have to admit myself, I am considered fully bilingual by many. In fact, while I'm here in uh, Ottawa, many think I come from Quebec when I speak French. But I too have to use translation many times. When I listen to Monsieur Gradet, actually, in French, many times I have to use translation because there are cultural slang uh, expressions from New Brunswick I don't understand. There are cultural slang expressions expressions from Quebec, I don't understand. We believe we need the best Supreme Court judges with the best competencies, and that is why right now we cannot uh, rely on the best linguistic competencies, but the best judicial. But we do believe bilingualism is an advantage, and we encourage all bilingual judges uh, to, to apply, of course. Mr. Godin, you've heard the comments by uh, John Major, former Supreme Court Justice John Major. Yes, uh, yes. He's weighed in with a lot of other jurists saying just that, that there's a concern that you'll be choosing linguistic ability over judicial and legal ability. That now, one Mr. Major, I, let's look what Mr. Major said. He said he did use the, he said that he did use the translation, and the translation was perfect. How does he know when he don't understand the two languages? How do we do when we go to, and uh, Mrs. Glover said it herself, uh, when uh, she needs translation about some time when I speak and uh, the way that we speak in New Brunswick, well, uh, the translator cannot even translate that. I mean, you know, that's, I mean, I'm not going to take that as granted. Our country said that we are bilingual. The commissioner of the official language said himself, which is an anglophone, Fraser, grand, grand Fraser, said himself, you cannot be totally qualified if you don't understand the law that you will run a decision on it. Then I mean, I have other people that say contrary, and even the University of, of Vancouver said, you know, if this become a law, we will teach our lawyer to be able to have the two languages. 
the, the University of Toronto said the same thing too. And I mean, I think me, it's an insult to the Anglophone that are bilingual and saying you're not smart enough to be at the Supreme Court if you're bilingual. Ah. You know, and I think it's an insult to them because we have good people on both sides that are well qualified to do the job. I believe that, and I think we have a pool big enough. And I disagree with Madame Glover. I oh, totally disagree. Okay, let's look at where the bill is at now. It's before the Senate. Uh, you have no NDP senators in the Senate. Can I not get a response? Well, I want to get to the Senate. I want to get to where the bill's at now. It's before the Senate, and the question is, what do you think will happen in the Senate? You don't have any NDP senators. The Liberal senators don't have a majority anymore. Do you think you have enough allies in the Senate to pass this bill? Well, let's put it this way. We have a Senate that say they speak their mind, and then they're going to do the right thing. I, I know that right now the Conservative told me themselves, the Minister of of Heritage told me, said, we'll get you in the Senate. I hope that's not the game who get who. I hope that the senator will be proud enough to get up and make their own mind and be able to vote it for the right thing. And I think in our country, it's a, we are mature enough to do it. And I think will be will be the right thing to do if we have the two official language that we believe in, the laws being wrote in the two languages. And you know, it's not a sin what's going to happen there. It seems to me that people kind of say, like, well, one a reporter said that it will ruin the Supreme Court. Imagine that. All this scary stuff that they're trying to put in Canadian, and I think this is wrong. Okay, Ms. Glover, you want to reply, Mr. Gauzin, briefly, but then the Senate. I, did, I want to know I, what I you will address the Senate question, uh, and, and of course, I believe the Senators uh, will follow uh, what they believe is the right thing for Canada. And uh, I, I'm very surprised at Mr. Gauzin, because Mr. Gauzin also sat in the Official Language Committee. We did a complete study, and it was shown very, very clear, we cannot hire enough bilingual people in the public service let alone having high standards, very high standards for Supreme Court judges and to try to find people who are in every region who understand New Brunswick slang, who understand, of course, Quebec slang. I am not able to do that, and I've spent all my entire life learning both uh, languages. So the senators, well, I'm sorry, Mr. Gaudet, you can disagree with me, but I didn't interrupt you. Yeah, and, now, and I, Senate, what do you think will happen? Is, is it going to be a whipped vote in the Senate? Or are you going to call the senators? Because you're, the Prime Minister has often derided the Liberal senators when they don't follow the leadership of the Liberal leader. Is your leader, the Prime Minister, going to tell the senators, I want this voted down? As far as I know, this is not a whipped vote. This is a, a vote with regards to something that is absolutely very, very important to this country. This is, this is a decision that could affect every single one of our children. And I'll tell you, I have adult children right now who have aspirations, and I have studied French my entire life. Not every child has been given that opportunity, and not every child will be given that opportunity. Unfortunately, Monsieur Gonet's bill will actually put some of those people in a disadvantaged position, particularly those who are in positions they cannot afford to, uh, to learn both languages. Yeah, but the court was not made for people to get to the Supreme Court. The court was made to put justice to the Canadian that go to the Supreme Court. That's what the court is there. It's there for the citizen that go to the Supreme Court. Not who's going to get the promotion. And by the way, we're not taking off translation from the Supreme Court. And even if a person is not perfectly, perfectly bilingual, we'll still have the translation. And the Venom translation did either. That's well, yeah. not what the Read your own bill. About. Okay, on that note, we're going to have to wrap it up. I think we'll probably be hearing next from the senators on this. Very thanks, good. Very, thanks very Read much. Read your own bill, Mr. Gaudet. You're taking it away. Yeah.